Cable Bahamas has always been considered the innovator. People can have confidence in Cable Bahamas as a mobile operator because of our past history. We've proven to the Bahamian community that we are in fact able to manage additional services as a telecommunications company. Customers expect the best from Cable Bahamas. The technology that we bring is revolutionary technology because we know that the Bahamian public, they deserve it and Cable Bahamas is here to bring it to them. We are ready. Turn us on. Good evening, you're tuned in to MB12 Weekend Broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Coming up tonight in news, a family mourning the death of a loved one who was murdered Good Friday night. A suspected car thief ends up in hospital. How a junk new legend says carnival should be a model for Bahamian culture. How to tap into your third eye using sound therapy, plus Cable Bahamas shows just how much it cares. I'm Paige McCartney, and we've got those stories and more straight ahead on MB12 Weekend. to MB12. The mother of the country's latest murder victim says her son made a change for the better, which made his shooting death surprising to her. Margaret Gardiner said she was called to the scene of her son, Harry Gardiner's murder last night on First Street in the Grove just hours after they attended Good Friday church service together. See, when the Good Friday to the church, he, before he took his communion, he went and he confessed his sins. He asked God to forgive him for what he has done and everything. And then he just um, take his communion and then it was everything. Everything was just peace. Like we came home, he just played with the children yesterday, changed his clothes. And like no fuss, no nothing. It was just, it was an unusual day. Which it was Good Friday and it was crucifixion. And then he just got up and he said he's going by the youths. Because he was talking with some of the guys, some of the youths. And he left after five yesterday. And about 8.30, I get the call. They say, come, your son just been shot. I was like, what? My son just been shot. Officer in charge of the CDU firing squad, Chief Superintendent Clayton Fernander, said the incident happened shortly before 8.30 Friday night. The 21-year-old was shot multiple times, according to police. At this present time, the only information that we are working with that he, along with several other young men, was just under the streetlight playing a game of dominoes when a lone gunman approached. He was on foot and fired several shots and disappeared. The deceased is known to the police. Uh, he has just been released on bail for a serious matter. For a serious matter. Uh, he's known to us. Gardiner admitted that her son had a checkered past, but made a genuine effort to get back on the right path. In December, he had a little bit of past, a little bad break and everything, but he got over it and stuff. When he came back, then the New Year rolling, from the New Year rolling by the end of January, he started going to church, and then he started um, doing things for the church and stuff, and then being in the youths and stuff and thing, And then he just started praying and giving God thanks and praise. Harry's my only son. Mm -hmm. Harry's the baby. Mm -hmm. The two girls and then Harry, but Harry's the baby. But he was mysterious, you know, children will be mysterious, but you know, then after he just, he just gets settled down, you know, and I just see a little changes in him and stuff and thing, mm -hmm. you know. And I, I get up and say, well, I go in the church, you go in. No, he say, mommy, wait on me, I go in the church with you. And that was very surprised with me yesterday. Mm -hmm. And then last week, Tracy he came to me, he said, mommy, I can be a truthful to you. If anything happened to me, or if I die, criminate me. Don't, 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 don't carry me so open, good. Harry and his mother attended Trinity Assembly of Praise, where Clint Watson is the youth pastor. Watson said he watched Harry grow up in church, and like many young men, he strayed. But Watson said the good thing about Harry was that he returned and was very active in the church community. He really made an effort to change his life and to live a, a, the light, right life. He was always in church. He was always at youth meetings. He was always at youth functions. He wanted to do right. Um, and, so, and so he came back and he was trying to do right, trying to do right. 
and he consistently did it. But he knew that because of his past, that he obviously had people who who are looking for him for whatever reason, or people who had issues with him for whatever reason. Um, and so, while he changed and wanted to make a, a positive start for a future, he couldn't escape that past that he had. Watson said the news of Harry's death was devastating to the members of the youth group. Said it was just he was just here yesterday, just yesterday sitting yesterday, at that chair. I popped shirt. in the service, um, and he was here, and he was sitting right over there in that chair with the white with the white with white shirt on it, and he was sitting right there smiling himself, just excited and happy to be in church uh, because he was so happy to have his new life, and he was just sitting and I hailed him and waved to him, and uh, everybody else was telling me after I left church early, they, when church was out, he was going around to every everyone, hugging everyone, hugging everyone. And, and, and we have, a, we have a, a youth department chat room uh, that young people talk in, and it must not have been two hours before his, 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 his death. Um, he wrote in the chat room, um, um, I had such a great day today at church, everybody. Um, love y'all, let's have a great weekend. Um, I'm surely gonna have fun this weekend. Um, so he was looking forward to the weekend. That was the last chat he put until he told everybody, be safe. Harry's mother told MB12 she forgives her son's killers and God will too. Will Gardner's murder happened just yards away from a police station. Officer in charge of the South Central Division, Superintendent Linda Moxie said her team has intensified patrols in the area, but it was unfortunate the killing took place despite police efforts. Um, presently, we've been doing a number of things such as stop and search, aggressive stop and search. We're executing a number of warrants. And in addition to that, we're doing a number of walkabouts. No longer than yesterday afternoon, we executed a number of search warrants and also we did patrol in this area. And it was amazing to know that we had a number of citizens who was very pleased with the presence of the police. However, Moxie said community involvement is crucial to the success of the police force. We're asking the residents, the pastors, and each and every one to come forward and give us information because this along with Yalel has been a challenge for us and we cannot do it alone. We need the assistance of the general public. Meantime, police say a suspected robber is under heavy police guard in hospital after he led officers on a high-speed chase early this morning. Reports are that just before 3 a.m., officers from the mobile division were on patrol in the Paradale area when they observed a suspected stolen vehicle with four male occupants driving with the headlights off. The officers ordered the occupants to stop the vehicle, but they refused and sped off. Police say a high-speed chase ensued throughout several streets before the vehicle crashed into a fence on Hospital Lane. Police fired at one of the suspects who was hit in the shoulder, but the other three suspects escaped on foot. Police are now searching for those other three men. And in other news, in recent months, Bahamas Junkanoo Carnival has been heavily criticized by many people who feel it's overshadowing Junkanoo. However, a Junkanoo legend is defending Carnival, insisting it's just another way to promote Bahamian culture. In fact, Saxon's leader, Percy Willa Francis, says Carnival's business model should be adopted for Junkanoo. Jasmine Brown has more. Francis made his views on the matter clear, insisting he does not believe Carnival is a stumbling block for Junkanoo. Now, you know, being a Junkanoo, and I, you, you think I would want to take away from that? Never. The Junkanoo legend says he doesn't see what all the fuss is about. Francis says he does not view Carnival as a conflict for Junkanoo, and he firmly believes it will be a money-making tool for Junkanooers. He added that Carnival is a way for Junkanoo artists to continue to express their creativity and get paid for it. I just see it as an opportunity whereby um, artists like Myself and others will have an opportunity, yes, to create businesses, to be, to, to have costumes for sale and, and, and to make some money. And I'm sure all those monies that we make will go towards in preparation for our costumes for Boxing Day and for New Year's Day. And so I don't see any conflict at all in, 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 this, in this idea. In fact, I, I think it's going to enhance what it is that we do. Um, um, uh, even as it relates to our creativity. When asked if he felt John Canute should adopt the business-like model of Carnival, Francis said this. The business, the business, we need to create a new business model for John Canute now moving forward, right? And um, it's, it's too ad hoc, you know. Um, we, we need to now begin to look at ourselves. And, because the younger people who are coming up in John Canute, there's nothing in it 
um, for them, they're going to go and do something else. And so now we have to think about how we're going to create. We need to have our business houses. We need to have our business front. We need to have uh, organizational structure where we and where we have transparency and, 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 and so on. And, and let us, let's look now at John Kuno as a business. And you know what's amazing? John Kuno is a production now. It's a major, major production. And if we could take that to another level, take this production to another level, I'm sure sooner or later this will be uh, on par with a Macy's in New York. Francis, who also serves as an advisor for the event, has previously said Carnival is not perfect, as mistakes have been made along the way. Despite that, he insists he still fully supports Carnival. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Brown. And listen carefully. That sound you just heard is from a singing bowl, sometimes called Tibetan singing bowls or suzu gongs, and are used worldwide for meditation, music, relaxation, and personal well-being, according to Reiki energy and sound healing therapist Linda Osborne. The bowl you are listening to is um, an A, which is the stimulating sound for the um, eyebrow chakra. A, a day, I think it was, who was talking about the chakras. Yeah. And this is um, helping to stimulate the pineal gland and our brain cells, helping to bring them into balance. Osborne says she has helped many people battling various ailments with her sessions in sound therapy. Before each session begins, she rings in the angels with this heavenly sound. Ring in the angels. <clears throat> I love the sound of these. I have tuning forks which make sounds, and I also have tuning forks which are more for a vibration. When they have these weights on the end, if I make them vibrate and put them somewhere on the body, it helps to relieve the tension in a muscle. Oh my gosh. That is very cool. And if I do it in the shoulder area, all kinds of things are really <laughs> That's because very so cool. So many people carry a lot of tension in their shoulders. Reiki is a Japanese technique for stress reduction and relaxation that also promotes healing. It's administered by laying on hands and is based on the idea that an unseen life force energy flows through people and is what causes everyone to be alive. She said how sound and Reiki energy can be used to heal. The sound, I've been a meditator and a chanter. I, I chant OM a lot. And the, when you chant OM, the vibration in your body is just so wonderful. And then when with all these different tones, plus I'm a musician, so I love sounds and, and notes and harmonies, all right? So all of it comes together. In, and whatever person needs is what happens for them. What are some of the um, actual physical benefits people have, have told you they've received from, from doing your practice? Well, first of all, tension release, big time. People come in and they're all like this, and when they leave, they're like this, and they're smiling, and they say, oh, I feel so light, thank you, I feel wonderful, I don't think I'm touching the floor when I walk. Uh -huh. So relieving tension, um, stress, um, anything like that, plus um, helping to reduce pain. Osborne says she has been drawn to alternative therapies all her life and has studied many. I've naturally been drawn to studying various things. I was, uh, I was the uh, manager of the original Eden Center back in the 90s before it became an acupuncture center. I was, uh, I've been trained in macrobiotics and shiatsu massage. And then I got interested in Reiki, which is energy healing. 
So I've, been a, I've had an attunement so that when I put my hands on someone with the intention that the energy is being used for what they need, it's not me. I'm just being the conduit. Mm 